Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. I have a letter that I sent. I got a speeding ticket in Connecticut uh, six or seven years ago. Now, no, four or five years ago, something. I don't know when the hell it was. But uh, I sent a payment in on this ticket. I went to court for it for some reason. I can't remember the reason. Uh, it took a long time for me to pay it or something because I had lost the thing and, and then they had to send me the paperwork saying I hadn't paid it and then I had to pay an additional fine had to go into court to explain myself or something. Some, some sort of mishap and I had to actually go to court about it, and, which was all just red tape. And in court they stated that the fine was 45 and on the paperwork they gave me this fine was 100 or vice versa. So, so then they they send my stuff back to me while I'm moving to Utah. They send my payment back to me and tell me I am in arrears and I need to correct the situation. And they tell me uh, that my payment is incorrect. I've remitted a payment of 155 while the total that I have to pay is only $100. So I was like, no, I don't. I can't access the receipt. All my stuff is in boxes. The only thing I have with me are like socks and shoes for the next six or eight weeks until I get a place in St. George and unpack. So it was just like I, I can't and I'm moving out of state. This is I've got to settle it. So it was a, a money order. They wouldn't take personal check. So I sent it back. I sent the damn money order back to them, the one they had sent to me because it was $55 more. Quote, to Robert J. Ponzini, Town Justice. This is Versailles, New York. Your Honor, I have met with an unfortunate circumstance. I have been assessed a fine of $100, and I was told by the prosecutor that there was a $55 surcharge. I also heard Your Honor mention from the bench that, quote, all of these fines have surcharges. I'm not worrying about that here. The clerk's office does that, end quote. Those are his exact words. For these reasons, I remitted payment in the amount of $155. Yet, my payment was returned to me on the grounds that the fine was only $45 instead of the $100, which was iterated in court. So the court said $100. When it gets down to the office where they do the paperwork, she's like, well, it's $100, and we know that there's a $55 surcharge, so the fine's $45, the surcharge is $50, the total's $100. The court, on the other hand, intended that the fine is 100 and there's a 45 or $55 surcharge taken care of by that office. So, on the paperwork, I have enclosed. You can find a statement that the fine is 45 as well as a statement that the fine is 100. And I have that in caps, in, or in bold print, because it's so ludicrous for them to reject my payment because they messed up. Uh, I'm writing to request an increase in my fine so that the payment I have sent will be accepted. I am in the middle of moving to Utah and all of my paperwork including the receipt for the money order is in a warehouse in a box in Utah. It's impossible to access the receipt until I get to Utah and in the meantime I would have to invest an additional hundred dollars for an additional money order to pay the fine. Please accept this payment in the amount of $155 as sufficient for the resolution of the case. And would you be so kind as to forward this letter with payment to Teresa Signorelli, the court clerk, sincerely, Brandon Cropper. Now, I never heard back from him, but I moved to Utah and they didn't have my forwarding address. So, for all I know, it's, I probably have a warrant out for my arrest. And there's probably a $155 Western Union money order in my name somewhere that's never been collected on. But hopefully it's been resolved. But I, I just ran across that sorting through some stuff and I thought that's interesting. I'll just read that stupid red tape court nonsense that everyone has put up with once in a while.